In this video, we're looking at video editing for the new MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Now, this is not my entire review of the MacBook Pro 13 with the M1. That's gonna come in a future video, but I wanted to do some first impressions for video editing to see what this laptop was capable of. So if you wanna catch my full review with all the various Cinebench and After Effects and video editing and Photoshop and just all my tear through on the laptop and what I think about every little inch of it, you can check it out in YouTube cards above. But today, let's jump right into video editing. And the first thing we're going to look at is DaVinci Resolve. So let's pull up DaVinci Resolve here and get started. First and foremost, I'm very, very impressed with the export times on this laptop. Now, as you see up here in the corner, if you can read this number, this is the 4K export. This export normally takes a laptop of mine that I run through the benchmark tests anywhere from, I would say, let's see, we got uh, export test here. Like I said, I'm doing this on the fly, so bear with me. Anywhere from seven to around 13 minutes and those are even high performing chips now the macbook pro m1 was able to accomplish that in 7 minutes and 45 seconds now what's crazy about that is the latest i9 10900k build i just did was able to complete that same 4k export in 5 minutes and 11 seconds so this is actually quite fast and i was really surprised because when i first started getting into the MacBook Pro M1 chip, it felt a little slow, to be totally honest. My first impressions were, okay, I'm a little disappointed this computer feels slow. But once it got all set up and, and got in its groove, I don't know if that's true or not, but it just started to really perform much better. This export time is, is very impressive at that. The next thing to look at is the export below that. It's a two minute and 57 second export. That is doing a 4K to 1080p export, okay? So for two minutes and 57 seconds, that puts it in third place right behind my two most recent builds. My personal build, which is the Ryzen 3900X and the i9-10900K. So right there, yes, this laptop can export very fast. And I'm, I'm truly, honestly shocked. Um, so let's just jump, let's just keep moving forward. It's funny, uh, I literally stutter over myself when I'm, when I'm talking through these benchmarks because I really can't believe how, how great it performs. And this is, this is the first edition, this is M1. Um, I'm thinking when we move into M2 and they get it inside the MacBook Pro 16 or if they, you know, just tweak the M1 and then put it inside the MacBook Pro 16, we're gonna see some great things. All right, let's do some playback real quick. So I'm gonna start this and we're just gonna do some playback through. But as you can see, it is very smooth. Um, I'm gonna step back into frame here and there's no lagginess, there's no drop frames. I pause, I start, it's very responsive. I can scrub through the timeline, scrub through, and it jumps right back in. Now up here in the corner, you can see the frame indicator and when I scroll and start, it, it takes a second for it to catch back up, but it's immediately back up at 30 frames per second where I film, and that is fantastic. So there we go, uh, initial thoughts on DaVinci Resolve without doing too much in-depth studying. It handles it very well. Now, as you add complicated uh, motion graphics, as you add in different effects and transitions, you might start to see some lagginess. It's very well possible. But my initial test with some music, 4K footage, um, doing the export and playback, very impressed. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quit out of DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna head on over to Premiere Pro. We're gonna drop these same clips inside of Premiere Pro and check things out. All right, now we're here in Premiere Pro running through the playback test right now. And just a sneak peek on the actual results as we're playing through the timeline. This laptop with the uh, 16,177 frames of 4K footage with music and having 7,240 motion design frames dropped uh, 5,481 frames out of the entire project. So if you're just playing straight 4K footage, you'll see zero drop frames. But when you start to add in motion graphics, when you start to add in music, when you start to add in adjustment layers um, and color grading, you're gonna see those frames drop. Now, that's not absolutely insane. It would still be very workable. So if I like pause, scrub through and play back, um, 
it's going to be workable. It's going to be very usable. Um, but I would definitely be more apt to recommend this laptop as a 1080p machine. Like I said, it's definitely workable if it's an on-the-go machine and you know you you know need to do some last-minute edits or tests. But this is not going to be a robust 4K production laptop. Now it, you could set up proxies the night before. You know, there's a lot of things that you could do. But for somebody who's more like me, like a run and gun, doesn't want to set up proxies, doesn't want to fuss with all that stuff. I would not recommend this for 4K. Um, I will give you an example um, of a of a opposing side, so to speak. So this is the Acer. This is not the Acer Spin 5. This is the Acer Swift 3. But the Acer Spin 5 dropped 10,000 frames on this same test. So it's about uh, $200 more affordable, the Acer Spin 5, but it dropped double the frames. So this is actually a great benchmark for this price point and quality. You know, and the Acer Spin 5 has an all aluminum um, alloy chassis. The MacBook Pro is a little bit thicker. It obviously comes with the MacBook Pro um, aesthetic and the Mac OS operating system. So for that extra $200, you're gonna get more performance and you're gonna get your Mac, which if you're watching this video, I'm sure that's why you're here. You're here because you're interested in Mac. Okay, so at half quality, uh, we saw 375 dr frames dropped. So if you drop it down to half quality or even fourth quality, fourth quality, I saw zero frames dropped. You can edit smoothly. Um, so, you know, it's just... I barely... Honestly, to be totally honest, I, I barely ever edit at full quality. I don't really find a need. It doesn't make a big difference to me. Um, I pause it and it goes back to full, like, full sharpness. Um, so for me, if I had this laptop as a running gun, I'd be editing at fourth quality all the time. Okay, so that is the playback um, and drop frame rates. For the render, so to render out those 7,240 frames took 7 minutes and 43 seconds, which is a pretty solid, respectable time. Um, something like my, you know, Ryzen 3900X full desktop workstation could do that same render in about two minutes and 43 seconds. Um, but for a little small laptop with this brand new M1 chip, that's fantastic. And I forgot to mention it, please forgive me. I'll list it in the beginning. Um, so you'll have already seen it, but I have the eight gig model, um, with the M1 chip and I, and then I upgraded the storage to 512 gigs. That way I could run all of my benchmarks without a hiccup. Just so we're clear on that. Okay, now let's talk about export times. So export times are pretty solid on this as well. So the 4K uh, Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export took five minutes and 51 seconds, and that sits respectively um, around the middle to top end of the chart. Um, the average benchmark export time for that on my channel is around three minutes to four minutes. Uh, most high performing laptops can do that in about three to four minutes. So this one almost ends up at six minutes. Nothing crazy, very respectable. I know a lot of you don't care a ton about the export time, but I wanted to mention anyway. And then for the 4K to 1080p took nine minutes and 15 seconds. Now, the thing you have to realize about that is it's doing a conversion. It's going from 4K to 1080p, so it's gonna take a little more time. So if you shoot 4K, just export 4K. Um, that would be my recommendation, unless you don't care about the time and you want to like have it be uh, a slower, a faster upload to send to clients, whatever it might be. Um, at that point, I would just do 720 and it might be faster. Okay, um, so that is what we're seeing with video editing. We're seeing substantially fast times, kind of shocking for me to be totally honest. Um, because when I used my 2015 MacBook Pro, um, I was not seeing results at this level. And you say, well, of course, Ben. Yeah, but up until this point, the 2015 MacBook Pro was keeping up with the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the i5 processor from 2020. Um, so I was I was often recommending people get a 2015 MacBook Pro with a dedicated GPU because it was keeping up and for half the price. But now, since the i5 costs, uh, the base model of the i5 13-inch MacBook Pro costs about $1,800, and this model costs about $1,300, uh, and then with the upgraded uh, storage, I think it might be around $1,500 this is a really starting to become a very, very good deal. Um, now, it is a Mac, so it does come with that Mac premium price tag, but for video editing, here's my solid recommendation. 1080p all the way, 4K at fourth quality, you're gonna have great playback. Uh, DaVinci Resolve was showing us great playback um, in it as well, as well as export times. So if this is, you wanna have this be your on-the-go, on run-and-gun 4K video editing machine, or even your, you know, if you're somebody doing YouTube videos, I, it makes me nervous to recommend it as a full 4K video editing machine. Um, I would recommend upgrading it to 16 gigs of RAM just so you kind of future-proof yourself. But 
honestly, from these results, I, I, I cannot not recommend it. I'm Benji Kaiser. I thank you so much for watching this video today. Um, we're going to have more full reviews coming in the future. I'm going to be walking it through Photoshop. I'm going to go through the whole uh, MacBook Pro here, talk about the keyboard, the trackpad, talk about all the different benchmarks like Cinebench, Geekbench, 3D modeling, everything that I can throw at it, and uh, that'll be coming in the future. So for now, keep editing, keep creating, keep designing, and I'll see you guys here in the next video.